Uh, I'm Megan Murphy. I, for 10 years, I ran a, well, I still run the website, um, a feminist website called Feminist Current, although my main work <laughs> was to criticize feminism. So, and I also ran a podcast by the same name, Feminist Current, which I still do. Uh, I now have a YouTube show and a podcast called The Same Drugs. Um, I am a writer. I don't know if you want more than that. Uh, whatever, however you want to introduce yourself, however you want to be seen by my audience. So, I mean, much of what I did within the, the feminist realm, I suppose, was uh to talk about things like domestic abuse violence against women um prostitution and pornography and at a certain point the gender identity stuff started happening so i started speaking out against that early on which is probably how i'm best known by a lot of people now i suppose i testified against um gender the canadian gender identity legislation at the senate in 2017 um and was banned from twitter in 2018 for saying that men aren't women um so yeah and still i mean i i cover a lot of different subjects in my work now in terms of like politics and culture and psychology and so on and so forth but i still do focus much of my work on on things like the sex industry and um the gender identity debate mm -hmm. okay well um, I've seen you bouncing around some uh, common, I guess we wouldn't say mutual friends, but um, <laughs> I guess some of my friends um, have been bouncing around back and forth with things I've seen you saying on Twitter. Um, I've had a couple conversations um, with kind of like the, the anti-porn feminist archetype, and I see that you're, uh, <clears throat> I guess, going around looking for these types of conversations or at least willing to entertain them. So yeah, I guess, do you want to, is there a particular thing you wanted to chat about or should I start or what? You go ahead. I mean, I'm happy to talk about anything, to be honest. I don't mm -hmm. have a lot of, I'm, I'm open to anything. If, if I don't have an answer, I'll let you know. But yeah, gotcha. I, I'll talk about anything I can talk about. <laughs> okay, so I think in the broadest of senses, in society, um, we tend to trade parts of ourselves for time or money or other people's affections. Um, on a more specific thing, in a capitalist economy, we tend to trade um, our labor, um, parts of our bodies, parts of our intelligence, whatever, for compensation. Um, in my mind, pornography, pornography or sex work or prostitution can all be kind of an, uh, an extension of that. And I guess the issue that I have is that if men enjoy consuming pornography, and if there are women that enjoy creating pornography, I don't know what is the angle of attack to say that this particular thing that people can mutually engage in should be considered immoral or unethical? Well, I think that the main problem with the sex industry is that no matter what, there's always tons and tons and tons of exploitation and tons and tons and tons of abuse and trafficking. Um, there doesn't seem to be any model that stops these things from being um, foundational to the industry, really. It seems like these things are inherently a part of the industry. Um, countries that have tried legalizing, like Germany, for example, have seen trafficking um, blow up even more so than it, it already had been. Um, and part of the problem is that most women and girls don't want to be in prostitution. So there's a huge demand for prostitution, there's a huge demand for pornography, and there simply are not very many women and girls in the world who want to be in porn and want to be in prostitution. So that's where the coercion and exploitation um, and sometimes force happens. Like, I mean, I think people think of trafficking as like this very specific thing where someone is kidnapped and, you know, maybe brought to another country and literally forced to sell sex, not allowed to leave their room or whatever. And that certainly does happen. But trafficking can also uh, look voluntary. Um, I think there's a lot of women who are in prostitution and porn who men would not believe are trafficked, who would believe that are there voluntarily. And it's not the case. Um, and I think, I mean, I've spent a lot of my career talking to women who've been in porn and prostitution 
And all of them say that while they were in it, they would have said that it was fine and that they were there by choice. And then after they left, they began to have a more complex understanding of the coercion that happened, whether that was via a pimp or like a brothel owner or, um, you know, most of these women are struggling with like substance abuse issues, addiction, uh, mental health issues. All of them came from, you know, they had histories of really serious trauma, molestation, sexual assault. Um, you know, I think that it's it's a lot more complex than choice versus not choice. And I think that's a really oversimplified way of looking at the industry. And that's how a lot of people who will say, well, you know, it's fine so long as there's consent. And I think that they're not taking all these other factors into account. OK, before we dive too deep into this, I think we need to separate out. Um, I think we need to separate out a lot of different things. So firstly, um, do we want to focus on prostitution or pornography? Because uh, I feel like these are two very, very, very separate things when we're talking about likelihood of sex trafficking or stuff like that. Right. So I don't think that they are separate things. Um, you don't think I that there's actually, a you don't think there's a higher likelihood of being trafficked in a brothel versus a girl working on OnlyFans? Like if we were to run the numbers, what do you think is more likely to see trafficked people? Well, I, there is trafficking that happens on OnlyFans, but what I mean when I say that they're not that separate is that if you're selling sex, I would qualify that as prostitution. So I think sure, that the women again, who I'm gonna are in pornography and are selling sex are engaged in prostitution, and women in prostitution are often engaged in pornography, and it's sort of all interconnected in a way that doesn't make sense to me to separate them out as though it's black and white. Okay. We can focus more on porn sure, if let's, you want well, okay. to, but... They're, these are very different things, so I'm just trying to, trying to figure out wh where we're at. You, I mean, you, I don't think they're very different things. So of that's, course you do I, think they're different things. We know they're different things. There's a difference between going to a brothel... If you're selling sex, or yeah. if, you're, if you're selling sex, that's prostitution. If you're selling sex acts, that's prostitution. Okay, if you're do you think that a girl to your body it's prostitution. Sure. So do you think that a girl that takes pictures of her feet and puts them on Twitter is the same thing as a 9-year-old being taken from Uganda and trafficked in a brothel in Germany? Are those two things morally equivalent or similar to you? Um, I don't think that it's the same thing, but I think that it's all part of a broader industry and that it is all connected. So a woman who's, you know, selling pornography on OnlyFans is participating in an industry where there is that kind of trafficking where we're talking yeah, but let's, about I mean, we have being to, trafficked into prostitution. Yeah, but I think we need to and, talk about meaningfully different, like for instance, like when I work at a retail store selling shoes, I'm technically participating in an industry that at some chain in the supply is having, you know, child labor potentially, you know, building shoes. But I don't think it would be the same to say that like if you sell shoes at a shoe store, you are participating in slavery. Right. We can, so we can let's speak about say meaningful. that we're not talking about somebody selling photos of their foot. Let's say that we're talking about. I think I made a mistake, guys. This is a big mistake. To their body. So most of pornography is sex, right? Women are getting paid um, to engage in sex acts with. Well, men sex or sex part. acts. OK, sex acts with men. Um, I don't know if that's even necessarily true, but um, because I. I want to. I don't know on OnlyFans if the majority of, of stuff being sold is boy girl content or if it's solo content. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I'm. I was thinking more of like, Pornhub, but I, you know, I don't access OnlyFans, so I don't know what most of the content is there. But I think that there's all kinds of different content on OnlyFans. I think that the, from what I understand, mo the content that makes the most money is like graphic pornography. So I think I'm that the feet like quasi aren't friends. That much money that, so in the that's grand yeah. Of okay, okay, hold on, hold on. So that's just not true. Okay. So I know the largest creator on OnlyFans, and I'm pretty sure she only does solo content. Um, Amaranth is the largest OnlyFans creator. If she did start doing boy girl content, it was very recent, and it's just with like dildos. Um, that is not true. There are a lot of people that are really big on OnlyFans that do explicitly solo content without boy girl stuff. Yeah, I wasn't saying that. when I say graphic pornography, I wasn't necessarily saying that there was literally. A I was just referring to like feet photos. Like I don't think that feet photos are the things that are making the most money on. Only sure, I know, I know, but we're okay. Hold on, let's. Okay, we're bouncing all over the place because you said like, sex acts with with men and women. So that sounds like pornography where there's going on. But I think in for a lot of OnlyFans stuff, there are just people that sell lewd pictures or naked pictures of themselves, or they use toys on themselves. They're not necessarily like doing full on prostitution. Okay, so there's graphic that still qualifies as graphic 
graphic pornography when we're seeing women's like genitals and things being put inside those me, genitals me, me, like me, they're me, being me, penetrated me, me, and so on and so forth i would still qualify that as graphic sure. and we can call it graphic pornography but it's not sex acts between men and women that's all i'm saying right okay so you but you just want to talk about only fans and no, i want I'm to talk to... about like the porn industry Okay, when I argue with conservatives, I do a lot of political debate online. When I argue with conservatives about immigration, um, sometimes they'll play this game where they, um, they, they swap out refugees, illegal immigrants, and immigrants, and they talk about all of them at the same time. And I think that these are three totally separate groups of people that have totally separate like realities that they deal with and they need totally separate treatments. The way you would treat an illegal immigrant is gonna be way different than you treat a refugee. When we're talking about like pornography and prostitution, like if you wanna say, I'm not a big fan of prostitution because it seems like there's a lot of trafficking involved, even in places where it's legalized, like Germany, which is true, um, that's a lot different than saying, I don't like all of the sex industry because there's trafficking everywhere. When we look at things like OnlyFans, that's largely empowering to the women that work and don't have anywhere near the amount of trafficking going on is what's going to happen in like a shady brothel in Europe. I, I think that these are now I we mean, can, we I, can, I we, we, we can, be, we can, we, 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 we can, empowering to women we can, I understand, I know, hold on, I'm just saying, generalization that well, you, but you've, proven to be true. Yeah, but you're making a sweeping generalization of OnlyFans and you're roping in prostitution. I'm talking about Pornhub. You, you're the one who's hyper-focusing on OnlyFans. Like I'm saying <laughs> the porn industry. So mm -hmm. most of what we see on Pornhub gotcha. is graphic pornography, okay. it's mostly dehumanizing, it's mostly misogynist, there's tons of racism, there's tons of like incest porn, there's tons of barely legal porn, um, and they are sex acts. Like there are women who are getting paid to perform sex acts that they wouldn't otherwise be doing. So many women in these videos are being exploited, abused, hurt, coerced. You know, they sign a contract and then they get pushed into doing all sure. sorts okay, of okay, things. Sure, okay, okay, hold on, okay, let's, okay, wait, let's, okay, okay, hold on. Let's do one thing at a time, okay? So is there some level of, okay, if there's some level of exploitation, arguably yes in any job, right? When you work a job, you're usually doing things you wouldn't wanna be doing otherwise in exchange for money. That's why people give you money for it. That's why they're called jobs, right? So the question is, is, is the, willingness for somebody to do pornographic content is that so meaningfully different from all other forms of labor that it's inherently exploitative. If you believe I think that, why? That, yeah, if you're engaging in sex acts and being penetrated, it does feel quite different. I mean, I think that we can all agree that being forced to sell a pair of shoes doesn't feel the same as it does if we're forced to engage in a sex act that we don't want to engage with, or if we're pressured to have sex with somebody that we don't want to have sex with even. You know, sure, there's sure, a sure, reason but, but, why women yeah. are so traumatized by not just like violent rape, which of course women are traumatized by violent rape, but by being pressured into doing things that they don't want to do in bed. Sure, but what is the meaningful difference between being forced to sell a pair of shoes and being forced to engage in a sex act if you can choose to do something anyway? For the vast majority of people working on Pornhub, they don't have to work porn, they could just work other jobs, but they elect to do porn because they make way more money doing it. If you and can- so the fact that they're being abused and exploited and dehumanized and degraded and traumatized makes it okay because they agreed? Well, they're being abused and exploited and traumatized from your perspective, but they might not feel that way. But they say that. If you talk to any woman who's left porn or prostitution, they'll, t I mean, look at what happened to Lana Rhodes. Do you I mean, think she that went every, in voluntarily, okay, yeah. supposedly, and left and said she was traumatized. She hates sex. She doesn't mm -hmm. even want to like hook up with anybody. She was pressured to doing into doing all of these horrific, degrading to like puking in a dog bowl and drinking. Yeah, urine. I understand all of these things, but if the person can elect to do a different type of work. How can you tell somebody that you're not allowed to do it? If you've got a woman that would be working at Target or I mean, Starbucks for nine fifty an hour, how are they're you going to, to say it. that you're not allowed to do so you're okay with it being legal and everything? You don't want to make it illegal? Well, I don't want to make it illegal for a woman to make a choice to sell sex. What I have a problem with, if we're talking about legislation now, if we're talking about what we would do about the law in terms of prostitution and pornography, what I would advocate and what I did what I have been advocating for for some time is the Nordic model. So essentially it criminalizes the people who are doing the exploiting, the abusing, people who are profiting off of this um, in terms of like pushing women to do sex acts and making money off of that. Um, so the pornographers, the pimps, 
the brothel owners, Sure. So when you dons. say things like banning people that are pressuring or pushing women into sex trafficking, that's a position that's shared by 99% of the world and probably like 90% of people in the sex industry. I don't think anybody that works on Pornhub or OnlyFans or in a brothel is a fan of people pressuring or pushing people into doing that line of work. Right. And I think that what a lot of people don't realize is how much coercion and exploitation is happening in the sex trade. So I think that when your average guy is watching porn, he's thinking, well, she agreed to do this. It's not real. She's not actually being hurt, you know, and, you know, she's getting paid. So fair game. And so they if have there no is, idea what's there happened is, behind the scenes. Sure. So they have there, no idea how she feels about it. She, They have no idea and they don't seem to care about how much it'll impact her after the fact psychologically, Sure, so if there was a way to ensure that people that were doing these types of sex acts weren't being coerced, would you all of a sudden be okay with the whole model? Or is this a red herring that you don't actually care that much about? Like, well, let's say that there was an exist. industry. Let, it's not a reality. I didn't ask if it, I didn't ask so I, I said that if we could make reality. a company, if we could make a company and that company had like a f affirmative consent forms or something, there was some way to ensure that every single person that was involved involved in the production of their pornography wasn't being coerced or abused or whatever and they were happy doing it the whole time as much as you would be doing a job would you be okay with that industry or would you still be ideologically opposed to it on principle well first of all supposedly that's already happening supposedly these women are already i didn't ask supposedly but it's happening saying, and i'm asking if that was yeah, but reality, i'm talking about okay what with? happens in the reality but i don't actually i don't the problem is that right now world. i don't I mean, know we could also say like i don't oh, know what you're i don't know works. what you're i don't know what you're opposed to right now i don't i don't even know what part you because it seems like what you're saying is women being pressured into sex trafficking is bad but literally nobody disagrees with you there but that's like a very like illegitimate position to take when the behind position is actually you would outlaw all pornography is that, well, that's what it sounds like I've heard you push for, or you'd make almost all of this illegal. So if that's the case, then I want to hear that position. I don't want to hear, I think people shouldn't be pressured into porn because everybody agrees with you. I agree with you. But so I'm asking if we were, if you could find a way, hypothetically, to remove all of the pressure, would you still be okay with people doing porn? I don't think, what I don't think it should be legal to do is to pay somebody else for sex. Why not? I don't think it's possible to ban pornography. I don't think it's possible Wait, why, why to shouldn't ban it be legal for two consenting people to do a monetary exchange for sex? Because I think that it's coercive and exploitative to pay somebody to engage in sex acts that they don't want to engage in. I think the that whole it's point unethical. Of, yeah, the I, whole, think that, I know that it's unethical. I, think that I know you think it's unethical. That's the whole. That's what we're trying to figure out. A woman who doesn't want to be with him is an unethical person. Okay, but I'm trying to figure out if two people are mutually consenting. You keep saying coercive just because there's an exchange of money involved, right? If I pay for somebody for a massage, is that coercive because they'd rather not be massaging me? They probably would rather not be, but if they're getting paid money for it and it's their job, of course they'll do it. So I'm trying to figure out what is the inherently coercive thing when two consenting people are exchanging money for sex. Do you think that there's a difference between somebody getting raped and somebody being paid to sell a cup of coffee? I mean, I think that we all know that sex is a particularly intimate act. Why are we comparing? Are wait, why are we comparing rape vulnerable? to coffee? Hold on. Because I'm you're saying that all work is somebody. exploitative and that I'm not people, all people I'm are not, being coerced into work. So you not, made the comparison. I'm, no, 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 so no, no, That's no. what I'm responding. I'm to. challenging your so assertion. A massage that is not the same. I'm thing challenging as a dick in your room. assertion that all forms of money for work are coercive necessarily. Now, if you want to go that route, we can go I there. Didn't but I didn't say think that. You said okay, that. Okay, <laughs> then I'm asking. No, because you said that a man paying a woman for sex is coercive inherently. And I'm trying to figure out why. Yeah. If it's two consenting people, why is that a coercive act? Because she wouldn't be doing it otherwise. That's every single job ever. So by that definition. Okay, but there's no potential for trauma in these basic like retail spaces. Bro, there is like, so much potential for trauma in retail spaces. What do you mean? There's potential for trauma in literally any, in almost anything. Sexual harassment is, in North America, illegal. And yet pornography, your job description is literally sexual harassment that's and not assault. true do you think there's a difference between sexual harassment and getting paid for what's sex? happening on a porn set what's happening on a porn set is illegal in any other workplace setting what do you what do you mean by that somebody's offering you money for you to do an action how is that illegal in any other workplace setting do you think that it's ethical to pay somebody to have sex with you you know that they don't want to have sex with you and you know that they need money so you say okay will you do it if i give you money do you think that's that ethical? you're describing every single job ever i'm gonna okay. pay you to make a cheeseburger i know so you don't want to but i'm gonna are pay you, you for saying it yeah. that making a cheeseburger is the same experience as being penetrated by a man. I never said it was the same experience. But okay, it, but you're making these comparisons, not no. me. Okay, let me lay out the little logic train. 
I'm asking you, why is money for sex? I know that you think that being exa exasperated is gonna make you look like you're winning this debate, but you're the one making these comparisons and I'm responding to them. And then you're saying, no, no, no. Oh God, why are you saying these things? Like okay. it's super manipulative. Me, I'm, it is absolutely, it's as manipulative or coercive as paying for sex is, okay? You're saying, okay, I'm trying well, to ask oddly, you. Oddly, I don't trying, feel raped right I'm trying, now. So. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I'm not okay. Leave well, this maybe as the conversation goes on, maybe the feelings will change. Okay. Listen, <laughs> you're saying that I'm, I'm trying to figure out, this is what I'm trying to tease out right now. Okay. I'm trying to figure out why do you think that paying for sex is inherently coercive? And the response that you're giving me is, well, you're paying somebody to do something that they wouldn't otherwise do. But paying somebody to do something they wouldn't otherwise do is the definition of a job. Every you're single job that we to work have sex with you when they okay. don't want to have sex with you, and you're okay. paying them to engage in sex acts that they don't want to engage in. So it's a very intimate, okay. vulnerable thing. I mean, there's yep. a reason why. Like, so a lot of women. Wait, 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 no, 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 wait, we don't have to. We don't have to go. Off the, listen, I'm just trying to figure out this one thing. We don't have to do all the other women. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out. So if you pay somebody to do something, I always respect okay, your patience. Isn't there a difference like between a person not wanting to do something versus a person being willing to do something for monetary compensation? So for instance, well, I don't want to- I'm talking specifically about sex acts. I'm yeah. not talking about like, no, no. I don't know, building a house or like Yeah, it's, this, it's the exact same thing. So let's say somebody comes up to me and they say, hey, I want to have sex with you. And I go, no, I don't really want to. And they go, do you want to have sex with me for $10,000? And I go, yeah, I think I would do that. Is that still me not wanting to do it? Or is it somebody saying like, yeah, I would do that in exchange for that much money. So do you truly believe that sex, like a woman being penetrated by a dick, is the same experience as a man fixing a car? I never said it was the same experience. It's but not the same. Why are we There's comparing a, these things? We're not, I'm not, tr because I'm trying to get you to give me something different than the definition sex. of a job. Sex is the difference. Okay. Sex is the difference. Okay. The sex act is the difference. And gotcha. we know as a culture, that sex and sex acts are intimate um, and are a space where women are particularly vulnerable again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, I mean, sex is meaningful. We know that it is. It, like, not sex necessarily. Is something... Hold on. Why do you keep going off on tangents? Okay. If sex might be meaningful to you, it might be, mean different things to other people. Okay. For some people, it means a paycheck. For other people, it might mean a casual fun encounter. For other people, it might mean creating a family or building a romantic connection. I don't think it's fair for you to define how sex has to be for every single person. I mean, if sex wasn't meaningful and we didn't understand that sex was something where women were particularly vulnerable and could face like lifelong trauma, then I don't think as a culture we would understand things like rape and sexual assault to be a very big deal. Um, I don't not, think that as a culture no one is we talking compare about rape sexual or sexual assault, assault to like having your wallet stolen even or stealing a cup of coffee or something Why, like that. I'm not, I'm, okay, just to be very clear because maybe my positions are confusing. So I am anti-rape and I'm anti-sexual assault. I'm not a fan of either of those things and I'm not here to argue in favor of any of those things. Um, I understand that women are particularly vulnerable during sex. That's probably true. Uh, how would you, how do you feel about male prostitutes then? Do you think that it would be ethical for men to do sex work? Um, what I don't think is ethical is, again, for a man to pay a woman or a man for sex. Um, okay, I'm asking if a who's woman paid a the man. Sex, I think is doing something because they need the money and probably they have a whole host of other issues. You're, you're projecting again, hardcore. Of, Everybody's got issues. Okay. No, I mean, it's you, true. No, no. If okay, you talk you trail to anybody on, in the porn trail... industry, you know that people are suffering from that's serious mental illness necessarily true. and substance that's not, abuse. And listen, the same thing is true of prostitution. Yeah, when you've built your whole life on being anti-porn, I'm sure you've talked to a lot of anti-porn people in the My industry. My whole life. I've talked to a lot of pro-porn people that are in <laughs> the industry and out of the industry, okay? You can't keep appealing to like, well, some of the people that I've talked to don't like it. There are a lot of people that do it now that are making a ton of money that would rather do that than work at Starbucks, which I think they should have the opportunity to do. So I'm gonna ask I again, do you think that it's unethical? Is it unethical to pay? Is it unethical to pay men for sex? If a male wants to do pornography or if a male wants to sell his, his body for sex. Is that unethical? Yeah, I think it's unethical to pay anyone for sex. Okay, then the then the vulnerability and the penetration part don't matter then. I don't know why you'd bring that up. If a guy can't even sell his body for sex, then... then well, he's being penetrated also now. If what if, a, if what if it's a male prostitute that has women like not with a strap on? Oh, I mean, that's a real common thing, eh? <laughs> How many people, how many women do you know who've ever paid for sex with a male prostitute? I, 
Okay. I mean, I think that's unethical too, to be okay. fair. That's, but that's it's what just I'm getting at. I'm just trying to on. figure I mean, out we why you think it's unethical. Stop saying we know this. No, that's, that's part, your opinion. That is your why opinion. Why do you want to have a conversation with somebody if you don't want to listen to them talk? I don't want to listen to you ramble and go off tangent. I don't, right now, I don't okay, even know. Why are we doing this? I, because I'm saying if you can I'm have a conversation. I'm not going off tangent. I'm are. explaining to you what my arguments are. No, you're going to reiterate the same thing. I start explaining my arguments, you interrupt me and I act completely exasperated because I'm not saying what you want me to say. I don't. You want to frame the conversation in a way uh -huh. that I am not interested in framing the conversation. Like the way that I want to talk about this is not how you want to talk about it. And you can't accept that. What the way I'm that trying... I'm looking at this is not the way that you're looking at it, but you don't really want to hear how I'm looking at it. You want to have the conversation you want to have, so there's not really any point to this. You don't want to learn anything you don't want to hear. You just are annoyed that I'm saying something that you don't want me to say. Can you explain so my... This is can totally you, wait, wait. Can, can you explain... This is just about can you, you like, explain showing off my... to your audience about I'm not what showing off to anybody. To I'm just trying to have a conversation. I don't know why you're even against sex work. That's what I'm trying to figure well, out right now. I appreciate the big show that you're having, but I don't want to continue this. Holy you're shit. keep interrupting me. Oh, God. Okay. You're so dramatic. Well, um... Adios. Thanks for having me. Okay. I don't know what I expected. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know what? That's about what I expected. Okay. <laughs>